Hello, I'm your host Danielle and this is the book club of destiny. <sighs> Alright, confession. Guess who still has not finished reading In a Burning? That would be me. And what's worse is, I'm pretty sure the due date was Friday. I have an overdue library book. Basically the first thing I'm going to do after this video is renew the library book and finish reading it. Just like that. So I'm about halfway through and from what I've read so far, I'd say it's going to rate around the same as Goose Girl, but only time will tell. Tune in next week. The end. Nah, I'm just kidding. So um, today, instead of talking about In a Burning, since somebody's slacking off and hasn't finished reading it yet, we are going to discuss a deeper, darker topic. One that has scarred me from a very young age. And that is children's books that terrified me as a child. So, without further ado, grab your favorite stuffed animal, squeeze it tight, and let's talk scary. Also, you'll probably make fun of me for the things I was afraid of as a child. And by child, I mean, like, really young child. So when I was a kid, I shared a room with my sister. That's not really important to the story, but there you go. And we were the sorts of kids who would listen to tapes as we went to sleep. Some of the tapes that we listened to the most were books on tape. You know, those things that would start out with, When you hear this sound, turn the page. Ding! So I don't know if it's because the books were on tape and maybe the narrators were creepy, or maybe it was just like the music in the background. But for some reason, these books on tape seemed very frightening. Even if they weren't maybe intended to be frightening, they were frightening. So, I thought of five books on tape that I used to listen to as a child and that had some sort of traumatic effect on me. And so it was those five that I'm going to address in no particular order. Book number one! The first book I thought of, and perhaps one of the most frightening, has the deceivingly cute title of The Pig Who Saved the Day. I bet you can guess what this story is about. Basically, from what I remember, there is a farm with animals. And the scary bit is that there is this wolf that comes to presumably eat them all. That's what I'm guessing. So this wolf comes to eat everybody. Chomp, chomp, chomp. And the pig's like, I don't think so and saves the day. I don't really remember how, I just remember the scary wolf and being terrified. Book number two! Lost in Dinosaur World. Okay, so this one actually sounds a little bit scarier just from the title, and if you look at the description of the book, it says something about it being a thriller. So, you know, the expectation should be there that Hey, this book is a little bit more on edge. Basically, the premise of Lost in Dinosaur World is that there's a young lad, whatever his name is, and he goes to the most thrilling theme park, and he gets lost in it, and I think has to escape from this giant carnivore dinosaur and it's all scary and wait a minute this is kind of sounding familiar 
journey to an amazing theme park on a remote island where dinosaurs once again roam the earth and five people must battle to survive among the prehistoric predators. So basically Lost in Dinosaur World is a kid version of Jurassic Park. You can actually buy the audio for this book on Amazon. I'm pretty sure that it's the same audio I listened to as a child, so, you know, go check it out. Maybe I'll check it out. See if it still gives me dinosaur nightmares. Book number three! The next tape that I thought of was Jorinda and Jorinchel which is one of the Grimm's fairy tales, so of course it's going to be kind of creepy and the sort of things that gives you nightmares while you're falling asleep. For those of you not familiar with the story, it basically tells the story of two lovers who go for a walk in the woods where an evil witch lives and she likes to turn pretty ladies into birds and handsome men into statues, and so that's what she does. The thing I remember most about this particular tape of Jorinda and Jorindel is when they are being transformed to a bird and, and a statue and um, the, the narrator goes jug jug because apparently that's all Jorinda can get out as she's being turned into a bird. It's like oh what a lovely day jug jug oh something jug 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 jug. Book number four. Okay, so this one isn't really scary, like, at all. But the reason why I included it is because there was one night where it gave me a nightmare. So, there you go. Scary. This book is called Ruby and Sputters. Sounds innocent enough. It has a little dog and a little cat and they're best friends and that should be great. That should be the, the great basis for a children's story. But if I remember correctly, Ruby and Sputters get caught in a snowstorm and they have nowhere to go. No shelter! And they might die. But never you worry because they're turned into angels. That bit I remember. So Ruby and Sputters are a lovely cat and dog out there who are guardian angels for children. So really I guess it kind of has this nice well rounded thing, but it gave me a nightmare about a dog attack. I'm not, not sure why there was no dog attack in the story, but um, yeah, that happened. Number five. The last tape I thought of was Peach Boy. To be honest, I don't remember anything about the story, except for that there's a boy found in a peach on the river. It comes from an old folk tale, and I only know that because I did a Google search on it and it came up on Wikipedia. <laughs> the thing I actually remember the most about Peach Boy is how we took it and changed it into this epic adventure. I mean, I'm pretty sure there was already an epic adventure on the tape in the story, but if you flipped the tape over, it just had the musical score, whereas the other side had this musical score going along with the story. Once there was a little boy found in a peach. So my siblings and I, would turn it over to just the music side so that it could be the epic soundtrack to the game that we were playing. And the game that we would always play was... well, it didn't have a name. But we had water beds at the time, and for any of you who have never had a water bed, I think they're kind of a pain in the butt to actually, you know, maintain and make and whatever. But as a kid, Water beds are awesome, and they are perfect for adventures and game playing. So what we would do is gal get up on one of the water beds, and we would have all of our stuffed animals, 
and we would proceed to rock around on that waterbed going everywhere because we were on the ocean and the waves were everywhere and we were just struggling to stay in our boat and the goal was to keep all of our toys in the boat and if they fell out of the boat we had to rescue them. So those were five of the tapes that stood out to me as a, a child and were maybe kind of terrifying and gave me nightmares at some point in time. Thanks mom and dad. <laughs> Alright guys, now it's your turn. What are books that terrified you as a kid? Let me know in the comments below. I promise I'll finish reading this book. No excuses. So until next time, read a book, eat a cupcake, and love life. Aww. Click, clickety, clack, clack, click, 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 Awesome sound effects. Does this thing make noise? Wait, there's a button. Oh. Try me option. On.